Okay, right back with episode three of the McBride Collection. Just gonna jump right in. I got a lot of information packed into this video. I want to uh, reference all, all music. Uh, com for a lot of the information. Uh, very easy to navigate this website and able to pull up uh, brief reviews and able to pull up band members and previous albums and, and the next albums and uh, just, just pointed me to a lot of good music and I got a, a lot of good information very quickly. So um, as I said, just digging into this, um, got a really nice copy here of Love for Sale. This 1969 album and uh, it's on Elettra. This album was just a great listen. These guys are an American uh, psych rock band, and uh, this, I don't, I don't want to compare them to Pink Floyd at all. But the first track, and then towards the end, uh, the tracks were reminiscent of like maybe like a Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Pink Floyd, and then the middle of it was just some great psych rock, some great acoustic guitar, some great guitar soloing, really good listen. Maybe, was, and then some of the acoustic guitars had some harpsichord like overlaid on it. If you see that at the rec at a record show or a record shop and you can pick it up for a good price, I highly recommend it. All right, next up, we've got UK, UK. Um, the significance of this album is that you have um, John Wetton and also Bill Buford together in this album. Um, King Crimson, ring a bell. Um, the guys from King Crimson and then Bill Buford went on to uh, to do uh, Genesis, and then uh, John Wetton. He's in many, many project, many, many bands, um, and and then you you folks that know know, and then those that don't know, he was also in King Crimson and Uriah Heep and Wishbone Ash, and then also uh, Asia. So, yep, he's the uh, voice and keys behind Asia, Asia too. So that, that album was in here. And it's really cool how a lot of these albums tie together. You find one artist was in one group and went on to another one that's in this collection. Um, connecting those dots has been really cool. But uh, John Wetton, yeah, just uh, really cool. And then the album, when I listened to it, uh, listened to it all the way through. It's a beautiful copy. And I know, uh, Eli, you have a copy, so I got, I've got one now too. And I'm um, really happy to check this one out. Really clean copy. Pretty sure this is the uh, first press of this. Could be a second. Custom label there is pretty neat. Beautiful condition, sounds great. Um, but uh, a lot of keys, a lot of key work. They knock on the door of prog, but you don't get that improv and those kind of things from King Crimson that was, uh, you know, preceded this. So really it's uh, rock, it's art rock maybe, and um, really good, but just lots and lots of layers of keys. So you have to understand the, the importance of the album as opposed to, and, the, and then the time too. Um, it was late 70s and going into that early 80s sound, so it's something between uh, kind of like a King Crimson and an Asia, right? So really good album. Really neat to have that one in the collection. See what else we have here. This one's really cool. This is Straub's, and then you might have noticed that in the uh, introduction video, I had another album of Straub sitting out. I started to listen to it, really digging the band, really digging the band. This album here with uh, Live at, at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, it's a really excellent album, just a collection of antiques and curios. You've got on here, you've got Rick, Rick Wakeman um, on the organ, piano, harpsichord, and something called a Celeste, I'm not sure what that is, but you've got Rick Wakeman here. And of course, um, Rick Wakeman, keyboardist and vocals, and uh, yes. So, uh, fantastic album and uh, great band, really starting to really get into these guys. And not only that album, but also this album here, this is uh, Rick Wakeman left the band at this time, but this album Ghost is really good. So I've been listening to that and also have this one here, which is Bursting at the Seams. And all of these are on uh, the uh, A&M label. All of these are on the A&M. Got some sleeve here. They all look pretty much the same. This is the older A&M label. Got the gold, and another one of these has the uh, the A and M, the large A and M label there. But as you start to listen to uh, Straub's, it's just really good music, really good uh, folk rock. And uh, one thing I, I was reading up on Rick Wakeman was he has a son, Adam w uh, Wakeman, and he's also a piano and keyboardist prodigy. And uh, he's had some more recent projects. He did uh, what is it, Black Rain? He was actually on Ozzy Osbourne's Black Rain album. 
and uh, he currently tours with his dad's old band's job, so that's kind of cool too. And uh, also, uh, while I was looking it up, he's also in a band called Headspace, and this is a prog rock band, almost prog, just just knocking on the door, prog metal. Uh, really good band. Check out Headspace. Go YouTube it, man. This is it's some really good rock um, from Rick Wakeman's son, Adam Wakeman. So, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, Headspace is really good, and glad I, I stumbled upon that today while looking up these guys. All right, next we have uh, Fleetwood Mac. This is probably their fourth or fifth album. Um, this is four years before you see the Buckingham Knicks join Fleetwood Mac. Um, this is 1971. Um, the guys in the group and ladies in the group, um, Chris, Christine McVie, I uh, read where she's starting to do more vocals and and, uh, and add more to the band at this time. Of course, John McVie and you had Mick Fleetwood, who were also founding members of John Mayhall's Blues Breakers. And then you have Danny Kerwin, um, guitar and vocals here too. And I uh, was reading up on Danny Kerwin, great guitar player. And I, I really can't, I don't know enough right now to tell the difference between him and Bob Welch. Um, but uh, just really good guitar, and this is really, it's kind of a laid-back album, but it's an excellent album. I think the, uh, I thought, I liked Sands of Time, I liked Future Games, and Lay It All Down was kind of a bluesy rock song, too, and uh, they do a little bit of improv or uh, live, so if you're a fan of, like, 70s rock, jam band, like, the improv, check out Fleetwood Mac's uh, Boston album. It just recently came out. Be careful not to get the previous re released uh, bootleg. You want to get like the newer 3D uh, or 3 CD or 3 LP set of, uh, of uh, Boston, um, Fleetwood Mac Live in Boston. Outstanding album and it also has uh, Danny Kerwin and Bob Welch. Or, I don't know if Bob Welch was there during that show or not, but definitely Danny Kerwin was jam and it has some great improv and a great live music if you like that type of music and don't mind Fleetwood Mac uh, before the Buckingham Knicks, but really good album. Don't worry guys, I, they've only been out of their sleeves just for this video and they're gonna go right back. <laughs> um, if you notice that I don't have the sleeves on. So then another album in there was uh, Danny Kerwin. After he left Fleetwood Mac, he went and started his own solo project, Second Chapter, which I guess this was a really strong album at the time. I didn't care too much for it. But I guess at the time, he really made a bold statement when he released his album, had success with it. Uh, I read where he's, it sounded a little bit like America at the time, and, uh, but still really good guitar solos in here and, uh, some, and, and really pieced together these songs pretty well. Skippity Doo, I don't, <laughs> that was kind of a fun song. Um, you can't, Love Can Always Bring You Happiness was pretty good, Hot Summer Day and uh, Cascades, the last song on there. But, but uh, Danny Kerwin from Fleetwood Mac, his solo album, uh, Second Chapter, and it's on an interesting label. It's a little bit different. It's on the uh, Amherst label, which it says uh, like DJM on it, but it's a black label with the gold on it, gold and silver. A little bit different. And then that was a first press. Um, so was the Fleetwood Mac. And then just a few more to go here. Um, 10CC, Deceptive Bins. Um, just recently saw this. I think a man over, uh, Vance over in the VK Lounge was showing this. Got the guys there. And this had the uh, track on it, uh, The Things We Do For Love, but listen to this all the way through. It's just really, you know, pop rock, uh, dentist office music, probably not when it came out. It was very popular, but I think I remember hearing this stuff like in my dentist office, right? A um, couple more 10CC albums. Funny thing is, uh, as I was reading up on it, I, I, I learned what 10CC means. And uh, <laughs> you'll have to look that up on your own. Kind of got a chuckle out of it, a bit, a bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, but this is 10CC, the original soundtrack. And it still has the, uh, has like a custom printout here of the lyrics. Looks like it's been typed out. Kind of a cool, kind of a spaghetti western kind of look to it. And then, um, oh yeah, this was pretty cool. It's on the Mercury, it's on the Mercury label. But what was kind of neat about this sleeve was it had like an excerpt here. I don't know if it's an excerpt from Rolling Stone magazine or from, from a publication. But as you flip this over, I guess at the time you buy this record, you can get news about the band on it. Um, so here you can go down here and read this. This is like 1975. A lot of these albums are mid-70s, um, except for like the For Sale with 69, UK, 70, Fleetwood Mac, 71. Then, then these were 75, but you can read about the band here, 10CC, and it goes on to talk about uh, the band and what they're up to, maybe a review of their latest show. 
uh, an update here on the Ohio players, also an update on Bachman Turner Overdrive. So a little bit of uh, news that was going on there in the Mercury label. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then last one here is uh, the last 10cc album that I had out of there. There's three of them. Uh, was How Dare You, and uh, you see this couple here having a fight on the phone or something, and uh, open up the gatefold and take a look inside. Looks like everybody's at a party, but doesn't this look a little bit like today? <laughs> uh, you know, this was released um, in the 70s, late 70s, but if you look here, everybody at this party's got a phone to their ear or in their hand. And that kind of looks like parties nowadays. Everybody's looking at their smartphones and their cell phones instead of communicating with each other, so I just I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, 1976. So, 10cc. So, that concludes uh, episode three. Like I said, fantastic album with Love for Sale and uh, UK, UK, and uh, Fleetwood Mac in there, and then also uh, these other ones here with 10cc and, uh, and Danny and uh, Danny Kerwin. So, really interesting um, music, interesting to find out some facts about these bands, and definitely. Uh, very immersive uh, time getting into this record, uh, very immersive, really immersed in this record collection and uh, just really enjoying my time spending, uh, looking at the records, spinning them, cleaning them up and uh, getting into it. So stay tuned for episode four. Everybody on the VC, take care.